So this is a little theme for the, for the next few minutes. Um, I'd like to actually pick on uh, five use cases for this. So specifically, I'll share with you what we've done to build our foundational customer data model. Um, give you a little bit of insight to our learnings. Um, and we'll break it down into our key objectives with this effort, our challenges along the way, and the benefits we're seeing from making these investments. Uh, we'll also talk a little bit about how we focus on the right opportunities in the marketplace. As I mentioned, the millions of companies we have the potential to sell to, which of them we choose to market, and how we choose to cover them. We'll talk about how we've optimized the right resources against that market strategy. Um, I'll chat about how we accelerate our time to market. And lastly, um, give you all an opportunity to some of the tools and, and solutions we're providing to really invest in the future of building out new data science skills. Now take this one company, EMC, and multiply it by the 90 million that are out there, and us as an organization and, and us in the room in marketing to the marketplace have three fundamental challenges. Our customers are complex, just like us. Our systems are complex through acquisitions and sales and marketing and ERP transitions, and our business is complex. Uh, so the approach we took, and, and with that as an understanding, was really an objective to get a foundational customer data model um, that really started with building a customer hierarchy. We didn't run off and try to dedupe every record out there or try to put them all in one single database. What we really sought to do was to build a data model that was consistent across all of our systems and all of our key subsidiaries. And, uh, and that's an approach that wasn't all that easy. There are companies and vendors out there that will sell you data sets that will give you a very single legal view of how a company is organized. And I use this illustration in the top left to show um, a typical legal company. You know, someone like uh, GE has multiple different global ultimates, if you're familiar with the DNB nomenclature. Um, and those global ultimates, while legally structured and separate, don't always present a very logical view on how you go to market or how you sell to those customers or prospects. Now, for those of you that have won the initial battle, which is taking your customer data and just enriching it with a third-party data vendor, uh, my hat's off to you. That, that, that alone is such a significant undertaking. Um, and, and we got so far in that effort, and we claimed success, and then we shared a report with our sales leadership, and they said, well, that's not how I see the account. Uh, I want the name spelled differently, and, and this subsidiary doesn't buy separately, and uh, we have um, a, concept, a project internally even that talks about how we define an account. Uh, before I took this role at EMC, I was in marketing, and, uh, and we used to have these big conversations about what defines a lead. You guys ever had one of those conversations here? So now I'm in sales and we're talking about what defines an account. Um, and we're trying to get all of our systems in uh, together, thinking about this common definition across all of our businesses. So we, we've, we've made some progress. Um, we've taken a legal view. And what we found is we've adapted it, that legal view in a central repository uh, that shares and publishes this customer profile information across all our systems. Today at EMC, sales, marketing, services, support, across our entire organization, we have a single customer data model that not only represents a legal view, but also a view that we can adapt to represent how our sales force and our support team go to market. I can't tell you um, that we're not done. Uh, it's, it's like it's a journey, uh, a daily journey. Um, but that very foundational investment in a data hierarchy is, uh, is, is just that, a foundational investment that I, I encourage many of you to, to explore if you haven't, and it's probably worthy of its own presentation in and of itself. Um, but it's that that's given us the foundation to really kind of move and build out our analytical capability. So the objective really was how do we increase our share? And, and for those of you that are familiar with EMC, you know we've been very fortunate in our growth and revenue as a company. Much of that has come and a credit to not only our great technologies and sales team, but also our segmentation, our ability to focus on key markets. And the way we've done our segmentation model is uh, slightly, slightly different. Uh, and it's evolved quite considerably with the benefit of big data. And I'll give you a little insight. Um, so when, traditionally when you size a marketplace, you can use uh, third-party data sets from IDC or Gartner and get kind of a tops-down view on where you see the market. Um, the approach EMC has taken is more of a bottoms-up view. And we take a bottoms-up view with a technique we call AMO. It's an account modeled or account market opportunity. For every business across the world, EMC <laughs> has made its best analytical effort to estimate the opportunity. And I'm sharing with you an illustration of what that formula used to look like. It used to look like 
nothing all that great, actually. It looked at number of employees and vertical and estimated where the company was and said, that company is, is this size or that size. Um, and I, um, I had a full head of hair when we first built the model, and I sit down with our sales reps and show them the, the output of this model, and they would say, you're crazy, John. Um, so we've evolved it quite a bit. Uh, so where we are today in terms of leveraging big data is those investments in the foundational data piece have helped us correlate uh, significant more data sets internally as well as externally. And uh, this again is an illustration, but you can think of our capabilities now can look at a customer's actual spend. We can group customers with a peer group, you know, large banks and emerging countries, and look at their spend. Uh, we can look at third-party data in terms of employees and uh, number of PCs. And, and our view into the marketplace, our forward-looking capabilities, our correlations with multiple, multiple data sets have given us a much clearer view on opportunity. And it's with that view on opportunity that we've built very targeted segmentation strategies that are very much the foundation for our go-to-market today. So what that translates to is we can identify the biggest opportunities and deploy the best resources to go after that. And we can identify other opportunities and leverage other partners or other go-to-market strategies to capitalize them at the, at the best yield in terms of our ROI. So that's a little bit about the data and the analytics um, and some of the insight we've captured. The next two topics are, are, are funny enough, I feel like where we've had the most impact and it's how do you share this information? We have made great progress recently of applying new visualization techniques to, to illustrate our big data. And I'd like to share one of them, an example with you. It was built around how we choose to cover the marketplace. And when I say cover, again, I'm taking a perspective from a sales operations view. And, uh, and when we think about sales operations, you think about territories or, um, and sales reps. And making sure that those territories and sales reps all have equal opportunity. So the view on the screen may just look like a big blob for the folks in the back. Um, for those of you in front, it's, uh, it may, may show you a series of circles. And what we're looking at here is an illustration of one of EMC's sales areas. So in this sales area, there are 21 reps. Um, and those 21 reps are being illustrated by the names on the screen. Um, and what you're seeing is the size of those circles, the large circle. I'll choose the one in the middle with the good name, John. The rep in that case has the largest opportunity available to him uh, in, in, in the, inside the entire territory. The circles inside of that gray, gray circle represent the number of accounts that he or she has been assigned to. And so in this case, the rep John is covering five accounts. The size of the circle again represents the fact that he's got two really large accounts and three small accounts. The color of those circles helps us understand the types of businesses that those reps are aligned to. And in this case, John is aligned to uh, exclusively government type of accounts. So this is one sales territory. Now there's slides that I didn't share with you that we have analyzed that look at the, the yield and the productivity we get from reps based on their coverage models. Some of them aren't all that surprising. We know that if reps covering too many accounts, their span of control to be effective is too broad, and they're unable to hit their quota and penetrate many of those accounts. We also know that if a rep is covering not only too many accounts, but too many different verticals, they're unable to give their customer a solution-oriented experience, meaning if they're covering banks and governments and high-tech companies, it's very difficult for them to be able to draw uh, a common pr best practices across their account base. We also know that if a, if a sales rep is covering one really large account and a lot of little small accounts, guess where he hits his quota? The really large account. Uh, and guess what happens to those small accounts? They go to our competitor. So the insight we've captured from this single chart represents 151 rows on a spreadsheet that typically would get emailed out to every sales manager, every sales or district or area manager would look at their account base. And rather where we are today is this chart is presented across our executive chain and is not necessarily a good thing or a bad thing, but it's a discussion point. It's an engagement point around data that we never had before we used this technique. The technique is called tree mapping. It's a statistical uh, tree mapping technique, for those of you familiar with it. Um, and there are many other best, best cases here, but you're not looking at bar charts here or scatter plots, or you're looking at a way to visualize all of the information that EMC has collected internally about its data. So it's customers, so you have a unique view of a customer in this view, uh, the opportunity associated with each customer, and the actual resources assigned. The idea here is how do we leverage Salesforce.com? All of this big data and insight to put the information in their hands to help them make good decisions and good engagements with customers. 
So I've always liked this, uh, this, this illustration here, which is um, traditionally, I think when you, uh, when you launch a new product, right, and uh, there's always someone in product marketing or product management that says, we've got this great new product, uh, we're gonna have a big promotion, uh, inside sales rep, you know, in, in this illustration, the equivalent of, here's a poll, the product, uh, here's some bait, go stand by this lake and catch 200 fish. And, and we've made a good business of doing that, and many, many of us probably still do that to some extent. Uh, there's, we found, you know, just playing this idea out, that there's a data available to us now that we can be much more prescriptive in that go-to-market strategy. You know, potentially we say, there will be a drift line in the water around 7 a.m. due to a mountain breeze, uh, use a spin casting technique and drop a grasshopper as your bait, and there's a 35% chance you'll land your catch. Very different proposition for a rep um, to actually to have that engagement with a customer. So how we do that is uh, we've partnered with, uh, with, with Sales Prism at the Lattice team to bring all of this information that we have available to us and present it to our reps in a way that can be uh, immediately actioned uh, with, with quite a good level of success to date. Um, and you can think about the, this wheel of data that's available to us internally, ranging from third-party data investments, data models we've built, uh, customer data, TA data, um, information we have about business dynamics, companies that are growing or, or adding new employees or having a new CIO come on board. Uh, all of that information today or historically at, at EMC had sat on our salesforce.com account page as links. And you, if you were a rep, you were assigned your territory, you had a thousand plus accounts and each each of your account had a bunch of links. You could click on this third-party data vendor, you could run your install-based report, and all of our reps were required to process all this information independently. And many of them did a good job of it. Um, uh, many of them struggled with it. And I think the, the, the key of what we're doing as a company trying to grow is about scalability, and, and a lot of that comes with consistency. And so this solution we have now is able to take uh, a, a large account base and using statistics and, and our, our analytical capabilities help identify the customers that might have the highest potential to buy something so that we can organize and rally all of our sales marketing resources around a given segment. And I'll use an illustration. So um, in this case, uh, there are companies that have the highest likelihood to buy a certain product that we're going to market with. And we want to get that product in the marketplace, get ahead of our competitors to really position ourselves uniquely. Um, what we found is in our data environments, there are common attributes for the types of customers that would really buy that information or that product. Uh, in this case, a company may have purchased EMC storage products in the past three years. Uh, they have not purchased one of our divisions, uh, has an offering called BRS. Um, they have not purchased that product offering. The, um, from the intelligence we have, this company is expanding its virtualization investment, meaning they're making investments that will trigger new types of needs and requirements in their IT space. Oh, and by the way, the company is demonstrating one or more growth indicators. What we found is that those trigger events in this illustration drive a really high likelihood for a customer to buy. So, so why would we run against six and a half thousand odd accounts to sell a specific solution when we have such high level of confidence that a, a single group of customers uh, would really have the high likelihood to buy? And so it's for that reason we've rolled out a new experience for our reps. Um, to actually capture this information. And what you're seeing here is a, a screenshot uh, reflecting that type of experience. So I mentioned before the target here was for our inside sales team. That inside sales team generally is assigned to a geographic sales territory. A geographic sales territory, depending on the size of it, could have thousands of accounts. Um, what we've done for them is taken all of their thousands of accounts and prioritized them specifically around the ones that all of our data sets internally and externally suggest this account is worthy of a call, it's worthy of a conversation. So the first thing you're able to do is prioritize all of your accounts inside of Salesforce. The second thing we're able to do is actually give them some context as to why we prioritize these accounts. And so this, in this example, there's a, if you can read it in the back, there's a concept here we call plays, which is what is the selling motion, the selling play that we're presenting to our reps to drive home to our customers. And they could range from, hey, this customer is doing a tech refresh. You know, they bought product from us a little while ago and they'd like to upgrade their product. Uh, it could be that they've got uh, a warranty expiring or it could be that they haven't purchased a certain product, but everyone else like them in our install base has. And so we present that information to them, and we're also able to estimate the opportunity that we may capture. So what ends up happening at our organization is we're coming out with so many products, every product manager has their interest in that, you've got to go sell the solution. 
uh, we've been able now to use the data we have to estimate the opportunity for each one of those products. And so it just might be that the product you have, Mr. Product Manager, is a great product. Um, however, this other solution that we're also being asked to sell has a much greater yield or potential uh, for us to drive revenue in the next quarter. And so we can use this way to estimate opportunity for a given selling play to prioritize our accounts. So it's a lot of data. If you clicked on each one of these plays, we actually uh, present the rep with a contextual conversation. What does that mean? It says, your account, ABC Corp, has been identified for the selling motion uh, because they've had one or more growth indicators. Their bookings history with EMC has been X, Y, Z. And, uh, and then it may go on to, to bring in some third-party data sets that say, uh, we, we believe uh, a competitor is installed there or something along those lines. So the key here and, and the points of this past two use cases is how do you share information and how do you share big data? Uh, you can visualize it, and, but what's really important is putting that information in the folks that can take immediate action on it. And in this case, this use case focused on our inside sales reps. EMC is actually built out, um, and, and I should call it a vendor agnostic solution, um, to help bring new skills around data science. So for those of you interested in exploring it as a career, uh, we're very proud of the offering. Uh, I've, I've personally taken it, had a very, very uh, large number of folks on my team take it. Um, it's, a, it's a course, it's an intensive program around data science. And, uh, and I think it's something many of you might find interesting. So there's information on the, on the link at the bottom there, but you can always uh, search it on our EMC website. So that was a little journey we went through. I paused and had dramatic effect on the foundational data aspects. It's, it's certainly, a, you got to do that before you can really benefit uh, from some of the, the progress that analytics and the tools and solutions have. But hopefully shared a little bit, and hopefully not too much for the corporate police in the back of the room uh, from EMC, about the foundational data investments we've made, the, the focus around MDM, uh, the segmentation and opportunity work we're doing, how we go to market more effectively, um, how we use data visualizations to really share information and how we enable our inside sales reps with sales-ready analytics. Mm -hmm.